How would you like to collect your dividends every single day? You know that rush you get seeing a dividend hit your account. How about getting that dividend income every day of the month? In this video, I'll show you how to create a dividend income portfolio that will not only create that cash flow, but produce dividend yields twice the market average. We're talking daily dividend income today on Let's Talk Money. Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I wanna send a special shout out to all you in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Nation, I am excited for this video and the series that we're starting. Those of you in the nation know I'm a big fan of dividends, like screaming mega fan. Dividends have historically accounted for 40% of the total market return and who doesn't like getting paid while you invest? Now we've talked about monthly dividend stocks here on the channel before and even getting your dividends every week, but now I'm putting together an, a dividend income portfolio that will produce cash flow every day of the month. The goal here is gonna be 70 to 80 stocks that will generate a dividend income on every weekday of each month. Since most dividend dates are extremely consistent and most companies pay out every three months, that means I'll be doing four videos here, each with about 15 to 20 dividend stocks to buy that, that are gonna create that daily cash flow. The best part here is not only is this gonna be a well-diversified portfolio producing constant dividends, I've picked the best dividend stocks with a yield of nearly three and a half percent. That's almost twice the average dividend yield on the market. I'll be putting this video and our other three in the playlist on the channel called Daily Dividend Income Portfolio. Make sure you smash that subscribe button so you get notified when those come out. Now, how this is gonna work is over the next four months, I'll highlight those dividend income stocks that are gonna be paying out in the next month. For example, today we'll highlight the 20 dividend stocks that are gonna pay out in October, January, April, and July. I'll show you exactly how I found these stocks later in the video, but, but here you can see that I analyzed almost 400 dividend stocks to find the perfect income portfolio for each and every month. We'll get started here, but do understand while these dividend dates are extremely consistent and companies like to pay out on the same week and even the same day each year, they can change a little. So technically the portfolio might pay out two dividends on one day and nothing the next, but it's still gonna be about five dividends a week. Our first four daily dividend income stocks produce an average yield of 4.75% and come from four of the most stable sectors in the market. Let's start here with $163 billion drug maker AbbVie, ticker ABBV, and it's 5.1% dividend yield. I like AbbVie here not only for that solid dividend payment, which has doubled over the last five years, but its recent acquisition of Allergan has really helped to fill the pipeline. And drugs from the Allergan portfolio helped boost sales by 26% in the last quarter, and the company has several pipeline drugs that could really hit big. AbbVie is one of the last to go ex-dividend in this group, so usually around October 14th, so you've still got time to buy those shares. Remember, stocks usually pay out their dividend two or three weeks after going ex-dividend, but you have to own them before that date to collect. Next here is Edison International, ticker EIX, and it's 4.9% dividend yield. Not only does Edison offer that high yield, but this is a great value play in that utility sector as well. California regulators approved the company on August 27th for its electric vehicle and battery storage plans, which means this company could lead the way in charging stations and infrastructure. The company is also set to argue its 2021 through 24 rate increase later this year, which could boost the shares further from here. Edison generally goes ex-dividend late in September, around the 27th, so just a couple of weeks to pick up those shares. U.S. Bancorp, ticker USB, is next on our list with a 4.6% dividend and another value play. Nation, the financials are one of the few value sectors in this market. And this is a chart of the price to earnings ratio for the 11 sectors and the broader S&P 500. The dark blue line here is the current PE ratio versus the green line, the 10 year average ratio. I've added the percentage over that long-term average and just look at some of these. Stocks in the consumer discretionary sector are trading at almost 120% over their PE average. Prices on tech stocks are trading at 70% premium to that average, but there is still some relative value left in this market. If you look further to the right, stocks in the utilities, healthcare, and financial sector are all trading within 17% or less of that long-term PE average. And besides that value play though, I really like the shares here as one of the strongest regional banks with returns on equity well above its peer group. 
the bank has a great mix of fee generating business, which is gonna help it in this low interest rate environment. And it's just generally a solid dividend stock. The USB also goes ex-dividend around the end of September, right around the same time as Edison International. Our fourth stock in this first group of dividend payers is actually a monthly dividend stock, Realty Income or ticker O, and a four and a half percent yield. Now, much of Realty Income's properties are in that retail market, but the majority is in that consumer staples type like pharmacy and convenience stores. That means I'm not too worried about the retail apocalypse, and in fact, occupancy has never been below 96% in these properties. Realty Income pays its dividend on a monthly basis, usually going ex-dividend towards the end of the month, so this one is going to produce that cash flow 12 days a year. Our first four dividend stocks down and still 16 to go, but I want to throw this out to the community. Kind of a fun little question. What would you do with that daily dividend check? Let's say you collect even a $25 a day or about $500 a month in dividends, easily doable with this kind of a portfolio. What would you do with that money? Anything you can think of. So just scroll down and let us know in the comments. Our next four dividend income stocks start with healthcare distributor Cardinal Health, ticker CAH, and a 3.8% dividend. So Cardinal is actually one of my favorite forever stocks as well. Between Amerisource, Bergen, uh, Cardinal Health, and McKesson, these three companies alone control 90% of the pharmaceutical wholesale market in our country. Even if we do see some enthusiasm for drug price controls from the government, which is a long shot to start, then I think it's likely the industry can negotiate a compromise that's still going to maintain profitability, solid profits for these companies while moderating price increases. Management at Cardinal has identified over $300 million in cost savings it can drive this year and next, which could really rocket cash flow. Shares of Cardinal Health generally go ex-dividend in the last few days of the month, around the same time as that realty income. Another company with some great market forces behind it, MasterCard, ticker MA, and it's half a percent yield. Okay, so normally a half percent dividend wouldn't qualify as a dividend stock in my book, but, but shares of MasterCard have produced a market-busting 32% annual return over the last five years, and that dividend has climbed by 20% a year. The pandemic has hit the company's cross-border fees, but the retail transactions are holding up pretty well, and, and this one is really at the forefront of that shift to digital transactions. I like it over Visa here, and I'm picking up shares myself before that 8 of October ex-dividend date. Dollar General, ticker DG, is another one here with a relatively weak dividend, but a strong 10% annual increase in the payment. So while I know this is a dividend income portfolio, I think you can buy shares like Dollar General, which have produced a 25% annual return over the last five years. Pick up shares like this that might not put much cash dividend in your pocket and still be happy as your portfolio grows. DG has a strong store network and is able to use grocery staple products like milk and bread to upsell people into those higher profit stuff in the store. And with 80% of the store merchandise priced under $5 each, this is a great one if the economy does start to wobble a little bit and shoppers get price conscious. DG goes ex-dividend towards the end of that first week in October, so still a couple of weeks here. Shares of 130-year-old McCormick & Company, ticker MKC, make the list next with a 1.2% dividend yield. McCormick is easily the leader in the $11 billion global spices market with a 20% market share. That's four times larger than its next largest competitor. And that's going to give it unrivaled pricing power in the stores and premium shelf space. The grocery retailer segment here accounts for 80% of sales, so the drop in restaurant orders hasn't really hurt as much. And in fact, shares are up 25% since the beginning of the year. McCormick shares go ex-dividend early in October, so you'll get your dividend usually around the second week. We're not even halfway through our dividend income list yet, but I want to personally invite you to our private Facebook group, Let's Talk Money Together. I love this group because it's a way for you and the community to have that conversation, talk about investing and making money. I'll leave a link in the video description below or just go to Facebook and look for the Let's Talk Money Together group. Next is one of our two cell tower companies on the list, Crown Castle International, ticker CCI, and it's 3% dividend yield. CCI is a leader in the connectivity space with over 40,000 cell towers, 70,000 small cell nodes, and over 75,000 miles of fiber cable. Now, these assets are going to be vital as internet and smartphone bandwidth demand just booms over the next few years. Between the adoption of 5G, uh, the internet of things where everything you own is connected to the net, and just that push to smart cities, this company owns the assets that are going to make all of that happen. Shares of Crown Castle go ex-dividend later this month, usually around the 26th of September. I'm digging back into that value play and utilities here with Sempra Energy, ticker SRE, and its 3.4% dividend yield. Sempra owns utilities businesses in California and Texas, two of the largest markets for the sector, as well as some liquefied natural gas infrastructure. 
Now, California regulators have already approved the company's four-year rate increases, so, so this one should produce very stable cash flow for a long time. Semper is one of the first to go ex-dividend in the list, usually towards the third week of September and paying out in early October. Shares of Cisco Systems, ticker CSCO, and its 3.4% dividend haven't rocketed like a lot of the tech's names this year, but there's still a lot to like in this one. Cisco dominates in networking equipment, which is already seeing a boom on that shift to work from home. And that company has a strong position in cloud and enterprise services, but what I'm really excited about here is the May acquisition of Thousand Eyes. That's a networking intelligence company. Now, this could really boost Cisco's cloud services line. Basically, it's, it's going to provide the data intelligence on applications and online services for companies, which is going to be a major trend for years. Shares of Cisco usually go ex-dividend in the first week of October, so still a few weeks on this one. Megabank JP Morgan, ticker JPM, and its 3.6% dividend yield could be the strongest bank in the market right now. now. I like JP Morgan here because it's got enough capital market business to support those earnings and growth against the interest rate environment. Now, basically, because interest rates are so low, it's really hard for money lending banks to make money. And JP Morgan, though, books enough of its revenue from trading fees and, and other market transactions like investment banking. It's also the largest credit card issuer in the U.S. and has a strong capital cushion just in case those loan defaults creep up. So shares here go ex-dividend in that first week of October, right around the same time as Cisco. We've got eight more dividend stocks to highlight, and stick with me here because these last two groups produce an average dividend yield of over 4%, more than twice the market yield. I want to go through real quickly, though, how I picked these stocks, how I put this portfolio together so you can find your own dividend stocks or just adjust the portfolio when you need to. Now, the concept is easy enough here, but it took hours to put together this data. I took the 366 stocks in the S&P 500 that pay dividends, nearly 400 large cap companies. I then went to the stock page for each of these. You can find this on any investing platform, but I went to Yahoo Finance and then to this historical data tab. From here, I changed the time period to five years and then to show dividends only to see the dividend dates for the last five years. I then took that and copied it into my spreadsheet for every single stock, noting the dividend dates over the last year. Once I did that, I could note when each dividend stock paid out on each day and then pick the best for our portfolio. For example, for today's video, I found 81 stocks going ex-dividend late September and into October. Doing this allowed me to not only create an income portfolio that pays out every single weekday of the month, but also to select only the strongest companies with the highest dividend yields. Next on our list is another cell tower REIT, American Tower, ticker AMT, and it's 1.7% dividend payment. So another one here with a less than impressive dividend yield, but hiding some amazing growth. Shares have produced a 26% annual return over the last five years, well over that 15% annualized return on the overall market, and the dividend has increased at a 20% clip each year. AMT is by far the largest cell tower operator in the market, with over 180,000 towers, and has a more diversified portfolio with assets across US, Europe, Asia, and Latin America. Now, those same market strengths that we talked about with Crown Castle are going to work here for American Tower as well, and, and its scale really helps it to cut costs. Shares go ex-dividend late in the month here, usually around the 26th of September. Media powerhouse Comcast, ticker CMCSA, and its 2% dividend are next. Now, Comcast has been taking a lot of market share in those internet services from the telecom providers like AT&T and Verizon lately. And just in the last five years, the company has grown its market share in this segment by about 8% to 64% of the market. The upside to this, of course, is besides that higher revenue from the segment, is that Comcast can then upsell internet customers into these other products like cable and streaming. The company has doubled its annual cash flows from its NBC segment just since the 2011 acquisition, and, and it's just a generally well-run company with a strong long-term outlook. Shares go ex-dividend very early in October, usually on the first day of the month. Back into healthcare here with the largest medical device company, Medtronic, ticker MDT, and its 2.2% dividend yield. Now, a lot of healthcare companies, especially medical devices, have actually had a pretty rough year because of the coronavirus. Because any elective procedures uh, or those non-emergencies have been pushed off, the company reported a 12% drop in revenue last quarter. Of course, those procedures can be pushed back, but most can't be eliminated altogether, so, so that could mean a big boost to the company's sales over these next few quarters. Medtronic is the largest pure play medical device maker with a competitive advantage in a range of chronic diseases, including, including cardiac, diabetes, and spinal conditions. So this is definitely a strong company in that healthcare trend. Shares usually go ex-dividend in the last 
last week of September, which means you're gonna get that dividend towards the mid-month of October. Next on our list, $3.9 billion leader in flow control systems, FlowServe, ticker FLS and its 2.7% dividend yield. Now, FlowServe is another big name in the industrial segment, though you probably haven't heard of it. The company is a leader in pumps, valves, and other control systems in oil and gas, chemical, and the power industries. Now, that exposure to oil and gas has meant that the shares have been under pressure this year and are still off 40% from their highs, but the company has a strong balance sheet and a lot of potential here. It's got just over $560 million in cash against about a $1.5 billion in long-term debt, which is pretty solid, so the company has that financial survivability that we're looking for and the rebound in the industrials market. FlowServe goes ex-dividend in a few days here, one of the first on our list, so be watching for that. We've still got four more dividend stocks to highlight, but I need to ask you for a favor. Nation, I'm trying to grow my Instagram profile, Let's Talk Money Joseph Hogue, and I need your help. I use Instagram to share personal finance ideas, uh, family updates, and just some great motivation. So if you're on the platform, if you're using Instagram, look for Let's Talk Money Joseph Hogue, or just click through the link I'll leave in the video description below. Four more stocks here, some with the highest dividends on the list and starting with a 3.6% dividend on shares of Patterson Companies, ticker PDCO. Patterson is a products and equipment distributor to the dental and animal health markets, so another one here that's seen a business hit by the pandemic but should see sales return later in the year. Against that weaker sales environment, the company has been able to manage its cost to improve profitability. Shares go ex-dividend later than most on the list, usually in the second week of October, so you'll be receiving that dividend towards the end of the month. Another tech powerhouse here with Broadcom, ticker AVGO, and a 3.6% dividend yield. The 2016 merger of Avago Technologies and Broadcom created a monster in the semiconductor space. Now, Avago brought its leadership in filters and amplifiers for high-end smartphones, while Broadcom specializes in networking and broadband products. The combined company controls a leadership position in, in several of its segments and advantages in that scale. This one goes ex-dividend pretty soon as well, usually around the 20th of September. Two major dividend pairs next, starting with the 7% yield on shares of AT&T, ticker T. Now, I haven't always loved AT&T, but I'm starting to come around on where it's trading at now and some recent moves by management. Management has been aggressively paying down its debt, paying off $11 billion last year, and the dividend is safe as it gets. The dividend is going to be about 60% of earnings this year, so higher than previous years, but, but there's plenty of cash flow here and savings after they pause that share repurchase program. Shares of AT&T go ex-dividend later on that list, around the second week of October. Shares of Philip Morris International, ticker PM, offer a 5.9% dividend yield and very stable cash flow. Now, shares of PM are basically flat for the year, and I don't think the recent FDA announcement to allow IQOS to be marketed in the U.S. is built into the price. Tobacco volume is lower in the markets, but the company has enough pricing power and, and other products, it's going to be a cash machine for a very long time. Shares go ex-dividend later this month, usually in the last week of September. Click on the video to the right for my weekly dividend income stocks, 12 dividend stocks that are going to put cash in your pocket every single week. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.